tears creep while you and me repeat this bittersweet heat is suffocating Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to draw realistic eyes. Um, I'm going to be sharing some tips and tricks and some things that you really want to look out for and make sure you get in your drawing to make them look as realistic as possible. So at the start of your artistic career, which may have been when you were five or even much older, it doesn't really matter. This is what a standard eye that you draw would have looked like. You would have gotten the basic shape, you would have put in a basic color, and then you would draw in the lashes. Now obviously there's nothing wrong with this and some of Picasso's paintings have this and Picasso's a very internationally renowned artist. Here's a picture of the actual human eye, this is my eye, and I'm going to put the two pictures side by side and you can see that there's a few features that the drawing on the left is not taking into account and those features are the lashes and the little flap on the top of the eye and under the eye. Now the under eye, it's not necessarily an eye bag, it's just the socket that holds your eye in. So if you want your drawings to look realistic, that's not something you can forget because otherwise it just looks like the eyes are floating. Now to start off, I'm just going to use a lighter pencil, I'm going to sharpen it and map out the details of the eye. I'm using a lighter color, it'll be easy to erase if I make any mistakes. For the actual color of the eye, I should start off with black and then I use shades of green and brown to get the eye to look like the color of my model, which is a makeup artist on Instagram called Mrs. That Guy Eva. Now, here is something you really want to make sure you do and what I'm doing here is I'm using black to add shadow to the actual pupil or the actual iris right underneath the upper lid and this is going to add dimension to the iris and it's also going to make it look like the lid is on top of the iris which you know it is so there is going to be some shadow under most lightings. I keep a white pencil handy to just clean up anything and then I use an ivory pencil to make the colors in there stand out and add in some details. Now using a white jelly pen, I'm going to add in the reflection of the light. Now this is also a really, really important step. It adds a lot of dimension to your drawing. If you're a beginner, I don't recommend drawing from photos that are taken in natural lighting because the actual reflection of the light in the eye is going to be very tricky to draw. Um, makeup artists usually just have the reflection of the ring light, so that's what I put in. You also want to make sure you really define the tear duct. That usually has a red pink color depending on the lighting, depending on the person. So you really want to make sure you define that because it adds a lot of, again, dimension and it just completes the eye. Because everyone has a tear duct. Now I'm going to make sure to define the actual crease. Now for the actual iris, I prefer working from darkest to lightest, but for other features like the crease, I prefer to work from the lightest to the darkest. So I use light peach shades and then I add in brown and then I use ivory to just blend it all together. And I also shade the lid. Now for the eyebrows, I go ahead and outline the eyebrow. Now because I've put it so much darker, I realized that I don't actually like the eyebrow as much as I hoped I would. Now this is the best part. You can erase them and you can try again. Now you're never going to get everything perfectly right on your first try. You will make mistakes and sometimes things won't come out as you hope for them too. So. You really need to be able to diagnose when you have made a mistake so you can fix it before you finish the piece. Otherwise, such something so small goes off and if it's an important detail, it can make a big difference to your drawing. So you need to be 100% real with yourself and fix the problem when you see a problem. Now, because I'm using white paper, I can just go ahead and use paint to cover it up and I think that worked pretty well. go on to define the shape of the eyeliner. I'm going to leave most of it empty because I'm going to be using something else to fill in the eyeliner later on, but I just want to define the general shape. Oh, 
Also making sure to fill in, you know, the little flap under your eye that just holds your eyeball in. It's not an eye bag, it just holds your eyeball in. I don't know what to call it. Also make sure to add some bottom lashes. It's just my style that I like to add lots and lots of lashes, but obviously you can keep it very few. Lashes are also a really important part. So the way you draw lashes is really tricky and you're not gonna get it right the first time. But for practice, I recommend drawing these slightly slanted shapes and you're gonna have to draw each eyelash individually. Now, the correct way to draw them is to use the shape that you have and then you kind of curve it down a little bit. So you don't bring it straight up, you bring it down a bit and you bring it up so it looks like the lash is growing from underneath the lash line and you wanna get them to cross over each other and You want to get them to cross over each other and look like there's a lot of lashes. That just looks more glam in my opinion. If you're not a fan of a lot of lashes, then obviously you don't have to do that. But just tr make sure that you curve the lashes when you draw them. Moving on for brows. Again, this is very important. What I do for eyebrows is first I start defining some of the individual hairs in the direction that they're growing. And then again, I fix the shape of the brow. I keep drawing in individual hairs and then I fill it with a base color in full and again go in to draw individual hairs and I fill in the bottom of the brow and the outer corner which tends to be the darkest part of the brow. And then using a lighter color pencil, sometimes I use white, sometimes I use ivory, I draw in hair like strokes and what that's going to do is that it's going to make some of the brown that I laid there look lighter and look darker and it's going to give the hair dimension and it's going to make it look like there's more hair there than there actually is. So I just repeat that with different colors and ivory and just draw in a hair and then I use the ivory pencil to blend it out. Now I would say that the last tip and the most important one is don't be afraid to experiment. So here I'm using a liquid eyeliner by NYX to fill in the eyeliner on my drawing. Um, I really like this as opposed to using a color pencil just because it's so much more matte and I feel like I have more control. I would say that as an artist, you stop getting better the day you stop trying new things. So, you know, just because something scares you isn't a reason for you to not do it. A lot of you are probably watching this tutorial and going like, wow, you know, I can never do that. But you never know because I used to watch a lot of tutorials when I was 10 years old and I never imagined that I would be posting one and telling people how to draw something or that people would appreciate my work that much that they would ask me for this. So honestly, the best advice that I can give you to learn how to draw anything at all is just try, you know and keep trying and keep trying until you find something that works for you and hold on to it and then try different variants of that exact same thing and keep trying to make it happen. The day that you stop experimenting and you stop getting out of your comfort zone is when you stop growing as an artist. Now obviously if you're doing a commission you shouldn't experiment so much but if it's just your work for you, you absolutely should. Some more finishing touches and here we are we are done thank you so much for watching i hope you find this helpful and if you did please don't forget to subscribe thank you bye bye see you in my next video